o'clock. Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Janet Lee and Fernando Lamas in Strictly Dishonorable. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play, Strictly Dishonorable, is strictly for laughs. This frothy comedy from Metro Goldwyn Mayer is full of light hearted romance, and we hope its good humor will help to usher in the gaiety of our holiday season. And as our stars, we have two talented young players who have both skyrocketed to stardom the beautiful blonde Janet Lee in her original role, and the handsome Latin Fernando Lamas. It's not a coincidence that beauty and talent often go hand in hand. It has been my experience as a director of beautiful stars that a woman who carefully guards her beauty has greater opportunity to appear before the camera because the camera close-up shows off a beautiful complexion and makes it a joy to behold. It's no wonder that our Hollywood stars depend on Daily Lux Toilet Soap Care for their complexion. Those Lux facials can mean fresher, more radiant beauty. Now, Strictly Dishonorable, starring Janet Lee as Isabel and Fernando Lamas as Gus Carafa. It's the late 1920s, and the female population of New York is swooning over the handsome Italian singer... Agostino Carafa. Yes, Mr. Carafa's reputation in the lush pastures of romance is quite as renowned as his talents in grand opera. Anyway, on this fine spring morning, one of his younger fans has called at the opera house to plead with an assistant stage manager. Oh, please, sir. All I want is to be one of those girls in the mob scene. That's all. Now, look, we've hired all the supers we need. Come back tomorrow. Oh, but Mr. Carafa's singing tonight. And if you caused me to miss a chance of being on the very same stage with Augustina Carafa, why, why, I'd never forgive you as long as I'll live. My goodness, I've loved his voice ever since I was this high. A and I've kept a scrapbook of him ever since I was this high. Why, well, I guess I've kept track of about everything he's ever done. Off stage, you're on. Hmm? Okay, be here at 7 o'clock tonight and ask for wardrobe. You oh. walk on, you walk off, and you get two bucks. Oh, thank you. Thank you kindly. Bye. No, is that? Mason or Dixon? Uh, well, here's her application card. Isabel Perry, North Orange Conservatory, Major Musical Appreciation. Sounds a little more like Carafa Appreciation. As its press agent, I assure you she hasn't got a chance. Tell me something. How come there's a rehearsal call this morning? It's not a rehearsal. It's an audition. Mr. Harry Donnelly's wife wants to become an opera singer. Oh, no, no. And if Carafa sings with her, the opera gets a big fat check, so... Just tell me when he gets here. Mrs. Donnelly doesn't like to be kept waiting. Oh, but he's here now. He's in his dressing room. Oh, fine, fine. Thanks for telling me. Gosh, she's on stage waiting for you, Mrs. Donnelly. Please, Bill, please. I'm speaking on the telephone. Of course, Lily. Oh, you looked so lovely last night. Yes, Lily, yes. You picked me up here, eh? Fine, darling. Goodbye. So it's Lily again. Guys, she's dying. Now, look. All I do is to talk to Lily on the telephone. And last night? Bill, you worry too much. Okay, I worry too much. Now about the audition. This is Mrs. Donnelly. See, she's married. Married with a husband. Bill. And all you do is sing to her. But of course, what else? Okay, let's get going. <laughs> Number, huh, Mr. Carafa? Oh, Maestro, we're ready for most songs. Madame Donnelly, uh, no, 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 no. What's no. the matter? Uh, please, I do not mean to be unkind, but uh, this is impossible. But all we've sung is this one little thing from... My the... dear, you are a very, very beautiful woman, but unfortunately, you have no voice. No voice? 
I have no voice. Madame, please, please. Do you know who my husband is? No, and I don't care. Harry Donnelly, that's who. You have no ear, no feeling. He can ruin you. Your F sharp is an E flat. Your E flat is a C sharp, and your C sharp is a piece of chalk on a blackboard. <gasps> Why, you stale over stuff. And such a voice is not for singing Mozart. It is for selling fish. Fish? Yes, and not even fresh fish. Oh. Oh. You just wait till Harry hears about this. You just wait. You, you, my fine press agent. You tell me she's got a voice. Well, well, yeah, she's got a nice little voice. For calling pets, she's got a voice. Gus, look, I know what the opera means to you, but suppose just for once you give a lousy performance at Figaro, who'll know the difference? I would know. My mama would know. Mozart would know. Mozart? Yes. And when my time comes to meet him face to face, I've got already enough to explain without this. <laughs> I'm warning you, Gus, this Donnelly will stop at nothing. He'll print lies about you. He'll print phony pictures. He'll dream up so much scandal that you'll... Let him try it. I will sue. Sue Donnelly? Yes. I... Then, then I'll fight. I'm an American citizen. I read in the history books, don't give up the ship, shoot the whites out of their eyes, the British are coming, yes, the British are coming, and the Italians are here. And so is Lily, darling. Lily, Lily. Oh, a breath of fresh air in the fish market. <laughs> i see you later, Bill. This is the end, Gus, so believe me, this is the end. <laughs> I tell you, Mr. Donnelly, one more week of this and we'll have Carappa screaming for mercy and grabbing the first boat back to Italy. Well, I'm still not satisfied. He insulted Mrs. Donnelly, see? Now, I told you yesterday to find a dame. There's only one real way to frame Carappa. And don't think I haven't been working on it. Okay, honey, come on in. What is this? Well, she's a dame, isn't she? This is Mrs. Peccatore. She's the new maid in that speakeasy where Carappa lives. He lives in a speakeasy? Well, sure, boss. I told you, that place in the village, Tommaso's, he rents the whole upstairs. How much for Mrs. Peccatore? A C-note. You know what you're to do? A C, senor. I'm a look, I'm a listen, I'm a peek. You grab anything you can see, hear, smell, or steal. Evidence. Oh, no. All of my life, I don't steal. And for a hundred bucks, I don't steal now. A hundred and twenty-five. I don't steal. A hundred and fifty. I don't steal. One hundred and fifty. I borrow. Okay. Now listen carefully. The first thing we want... Now, will you listen to me, Gus? Will you please listen to okay, me? Okay, Bill, I listen. I got a tip. I just got a tip that Donnelly's hired some dame to frame you. Bill, please. After what happens tonight in the opera, I am too upset to listen to anything. Now, where is Luigi? I just want a nice massage and go to bed. That's Luigi all. will be up in a minute. And speaking of that fiasco tonight, you still think that was an accident? Please, right? I'm trying to forget. Well, I'm not. This morning, a kid named Isabel Perry gets a job working in the mob scene. Tonight, she falls through the scenery just when you reach him for that high seat. All right, all right. It was an accident. Oh, yeah? Well, who do you think is downstairs right now? Isabel Perry. Tommaso says she's been waiting to see you. I tell you, she's working for Donnelly. Well, call the police. Throw her out. No, no, don't call the police. Just, just throw her out. Uh, uh, Bill, you know, uh, uh, this is a very pretty girl. I see her when she falls down. Uh, Signor, are you ready? I'll give you a nice massage. Come in, Luigi, come in. I hear what happened at the opera tonight. A massage is just what you need. Yeah. Scusate. The signor used the one pillow or two. Oh, please. So why you bother the signor with the pillow? I'm a new maid. Tomas is not telling me. One pillow or two. That's the difference. One or two. Is it you use the two. We only got one. Then he used the one. All right. 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 Oh, oh, the new maid. My daughter, she's throwing a family. It's all right, Luigi. It's all right. All right. Bill. This, uh, this girl downstairs. Uh, are you sure it is a frame-up? But beautiful. When you want to hook Carafa with the dame, what do you use? Some prima donna with feathers and furs and temper tantrums? Ah, oh, no, Carafa's had all that. Not a head. He got. Keep quiet. Turn over. Do the neck. So what does Donnelly do? He reaches down into Dixie and comes up with Miss Cornpone of 1928. This is her name? Cornpone? Talks like she's got a mouth full of chitlins and black-eyed peas. 
Corn Pong. Such a name for a pretty girl. And they even hire a two-bit actor to play a boyfriend. To make all this up? But why? That's precisely what we're going to find out. So get dressed and come downstairs. Are you sure you want me to meet this girl? I want the full command for treatment. The hand kiss and the wine, the works. But why? Why? Well, because you are cut off. Or she going to expect. Who asked you? Nobody. Then mind your business, all right? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, look, Isabel, how much longer are we going to hang around this place? Oh, but, Henry, I, I just got to apologize. So you fell through the scenery. But you won't get your job back by coming here and saying you're sorry. But, Henry, there's such a thing as common decency, you know. Why, down home, when you caused another person unkindness, hurt, or humiliation, why, everybody knows the only human thing to do is to go back and apologize. But we're not down home. And we're... when the man you humiliated is one of the greatest artists of our time, <laughs> why... Some artists. An opera singer who lives in a speakeasy. Oh, Henry, you never used to get cross with me. Why, when we first met, you were always smiling and, and sweet and... Oh, you Southerners are all alike. You think the sun shines just to make a nice day to go picnicking. Well, it doesn't. It shines to germinate the wheat kernels. It shines so you can have fresh vegetables. Squash, beans, peas, spinach. Oh, I hate spinach. And that's another thing. You don't eat the right food. Henry. Oh, Henry, look. Huh? Well, uh, Miss Perry, may I present Mr. Agostino Cavatta? Oh, how, how, how do you do? Enchanted. And her fiancé, Mr. Green of North Orange, New Jersey. He sells insurance. Senor. How are you? Bill, you tell me there is a young lady. This is not only a young lady. This is a vision. Oh. My dear, you are lovely. Oh, well... Well, thank you kindly. Uh, uh, all right, Isabel, get on with it. It's getting late. Oh, um, Mr. Carafa, it, it's just that I'm so terribly sorry about the opera tonight. But, my dear, accidents will always happen. Why, one time when I was singing Aida, I catch my belt on the scenery, I turn around, my pants fall down. <laughs> it was the big joke of Madrid all 1924. Oh, but it wasn't 24, and it wasn't Madrid. It was Rome. Oh, and you weren't singing, I eat it. It was Boris Goodnorth. But how, how would you know all this? Yeah, you seem to have done quite a bit of research, Miss Perry. Well, I, I guess I know just about everything there is to know about Augustina Carafa. Huh. Tommaso, we must have a drink to the young lady who goes to so much trouble, and uh, to her very nice friend. Uh, champagne, please. Uh, sorry, but uh, we've got a long ride back to Jersey. Oh, well, now that's downright discourteous, Henry. We certainly have time for one friendly little drink. You are not drinking champagne in a speakeasy with a bunch of strange uh, foreigners. Oh, Henry Green, I'm surprised at you. Well, I'm surprised at you. Well, somebody here got an automobile uh, with a Jersey license. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Well, the policeman says to park in front by the fire plug. Huh? Well... <laughs> All right, all right, I, I'm coming. Well, you better hurry up because the cop will get very mad. Uh, you'd better go, Henry. Oh? Well, uh, why are you so anxious to get rid of me? Well, if there's a policeman outside... Oh, all right, all right, but I'm coming back. And then you're going home, you understand? Yes, Henry. Okay. He, he isn't always this way. No, of course not, my dear, of course. Now, uh, Luigi, you play for us something on the piano, please, eh? Huh? All right. And now, now the wine. The sunlight of Italy in a bottle of Lacrima Christi. Oh, this is, this is so nice. Why, well, I didn't expect you to be anything like this. Well, what did you expect, my dear? I don't know. I thought that, well, that a famous person would be very grand and, and aloofish, but, well, you're just like the people I like. Miss Perry, would you do me a great favor? I would like very much to dance with you before you go away. Oh, would you really? Oh, yes. Very, very much. Excuse that, oh. Signora, but Mr. Dempsey says he wants to see you. Tell him I'm busy, Tommaso. It's very important, he says. All right. Uh, forgive me, Miss Perry. Oh, yes. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. What an act. Bill is no act. No, then why does North Orange park his car in front of a hydrant? He knows a cop's got to come along and raise a beef. That gets him out of the way and gives you and the girl a chance for a little hanky-panky. Talk English. It's a setup. 
In five minutes, he's back. He finds you two together and starts an argument. She breaks off the engagement. He storms out and leaves her flat. Well, huh? this is soft for us. Yeah, and there she is, all alone in the big city. No money, no friends, nothing. Now, where do you think Miss Cornpone spends the night? The YMCA. Your apartment. She does? No, 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 don't get any ideas. <laughs> In the morning, Henry's back with a cop, reporters, photographers, and wham, headlines again. Opera star trapped in love. Yeah, again, the picture in the paper. Yeah. Only this time, we got a way to beat it. You just play along. See, let her work her way upstairs. And at the right moment, a picture will be taken. Only we'll take the picture. We take the picture? And we'll see that it gets in all the decent papers that are just love to expose Donnelly. We'll show how he'd hire a phony dame like this to smear an innocent man. But this is such a sweet, simple girl. For 20 bucks, she'd give Santa Claus a hot foot. Uh, so hard to believe. Such a charming little corn pole. All right, now get in there and play it a big. This is our chance to get down with I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, well, that's perfectly all right. You know the champagne? Well, it's a modern refreshing beverage. You know, it comes from my hometown. My cousin personally steps on the grapes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, I hope you haven't forgotten about our dance. You will do me the honor? Oh, I'd, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Imagine Augustina Carafa yes. dancing with me. Everything that I possess, I offer you. My dream of happiness come well, true. Well, I must say. Uh, well, uh, what's going on here? Uh, Mr. Green, I... So that's why you wanted to get rid of me. So as soon as my back is turned, you can make a fool out of me. Oh, Henry, please. A fine wife you'd make. Well, I didn't do anything. We were just dancing. Well, the women in my family don't dance with every cheesy lounge lizard. They meet the speakeasy. Oh, Henry Green, you, you apologize this instant. Apologize? <laughs> I'll teach you to behave like a cheap little floozy. Oh! You heard me. Well. You know what this means. Perfectly. So if you don't come now... Oh, I know just what you're thinking, Henry. That I have no money, no friends, no place to go. But don't you worry about me. I'll manage to get along all right. Now, now take your ring. Uh, take it, I say. All right, I will. Good night. And goodbye. <laughs> Oh, gee, Miss Perry, this is, this is awful. Oh, now I've done it all right, all right. Isabel, do not feel too bad. Oh, but, but, but I feel wonderful. For months there's been something wrong with me, and now I know what it is. Too much, Henry. Mm. Uh, excuse me, but I, I think I'll have some more champagne. But of course. Isabel, I must tell you that though I'm very sorry for you, uh, I'm very happy for me. So I, I hope you'll... You'll not mind my saying this, but I'm terribly fond of you. Oh, are you, uh, Gus? Oh, yes, terribly. Well, that's nice of you to say that. Now, now, let's see. Now, where can we put you tonight? Oh, I'll find a place. Where? On the street? At this hour? No, no, no. You will accept my hospitality until you find something you like. Have you room for me? Certainly. In my living room is a couch for someone. Uh, uh, someone like me? Someone exactly like you. All right. I will. Good. I have the maid fix the bed, eh? Bill, you will find a new maid at uh, Mrs. Peccatori. But uh, aren't you taking Miss Perry home? No, she's going to be my guest. What do you mean, sir? Oh, Mr. Carapa said I could stay in the living room of his apartment. Well, in that case, I, uh, I wish you a very good night. Uh, um... Mr. Dempsey's afraid for me. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, this way, Isabel. Uh, Gus. Hmm? Just what are your intentions toward me? Strictly dishonorable, Isabel. Strictly dishonorable. Act two of Strictly Dishonorable, starring Janet Lee as Isabel, and Fernando Lamas as Gus Carafa, with Maria Palmer as Lily. <laughs> There's very little doubt in the minds of Agostino Carafa and his enterprising press agent that Isabel, the naive little southern girl, 
is just another invention of a wicked newspaper owner to involve the opera star in scandal. And they've set their trap accordingly. But while Isabel and Agostino have gone upstairs, Mrs. Peccatore, the new maid at the speakeasy, has rushed to the telephone. Hello? Hello? Is Mr. Donnelly? It's Mrs. Peccatore. Mr. Donnelly, they're gonna take pictures of the girl you send. Why, you not send a girl? Well, they think you send a girl. See, and they're gonna put in somebody else's newspaper. Huh? I call you back. Oh, so this is what it's like. Hmm? Oh, well, um... I mean, I've never been in a man's apartment before. And especially a man who's in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, my, what a beautiful lady. You mean that picture? Uh-huh. Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, Lily. Yes, my, my dear cousin Lily. Oh, yeah. well, uh, she's, uh, she's written something on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Gus, for my darling, forever. Uh, well, we are, we are a very affectionate family, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, and all these other pictures. Oh, beautiful women and... Uh, all cousins? Oh, no, no, not, not all of them. No, uh, some of them are, are nieces. Yes. Oh. Uh, Is, Isabel, look. Now, I go downstairs and I get you a nice bottle of wine. Huh? Uh, I'd rather have milk and crackers. Milk and crackers? Oh, Gus, isn't life wonderful? Milk and crackers? Huh? I'll come back in a minute, Isabel. Oh, you're doing great, Gus. Now run upstairs with the milk and crackers. Oh, uh, this is Charlie Hart, and he's got his camera all set. How do you do? I don't know, Bill. Crackers and milk. Where's the human interest? Now, Bill, 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 listen, listen to me. I, I hope you're not making a mistake. This girl seems so, so real, so honest. Please, she's a southern pride, Lucretia Borgia. Then why does she want milk and crackers? Who knows? Maybe she's got an ulcer. Oh, I tell you. I tell you, listen, Bill, to me, this corn pone is not corn pone. Now, what are you going to do when you get upstairs? Well, the... the we sit on the couch, I, I embrace her with one arm, and uh, with the other, I push the buzzer. Then you come in and take the picture. You better right. hurry, Mr. Carafa. We're holding tape one. Uh, hello? Oh, no, I'm sorry. He just stepped out. Oh, oh uh, here he is now. Uh, who is it, my dear? Uh, a woman, Gus. Here, here. Your milk and the crackers. I'm sure it's my mother. Mamma! Oh, Mamma, cara Mamma! Come stai, bellezza? Come ti trovi? How wonderful to hear your voice. This is not cara Mamma. This is Lily. Lily? And you have a woman with you. Oh, oh, it, it is the maid, yes. She, she cleans up the room, you see. Oh. oh. You are coming to see me, Gus, darling. Uh, no, no, I, I cannot see you tonight, no. Oh, you sound so... Busy, God. Yes, uh, business, Lily. Business matters, you see. I, I will see you tomorrow, darling. Eh? Do you love Lily? Oh, yes, very much. Mm, good night, Cass. <laughs> good night, good night. That was uh, Cousin Lily, that one. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. And now you drink the milk, Isabel, eh? I put some lovely music on the phone. Eh? All right. Isabel. Uh, yes, Gus? It is so nice to have you here. Someone so, so sweet. Uh, you sure you wouldn't like some milk? So young, so fresh, so gentle. Milk's awfully good for you. Isabel. It relaxes you and coats your stomach. You don't want me to sit so close to you like this? Uh, down home, we had milk from our own cows. Please, no cows tonight. Gus, uh, <laughs> have you ever been in, in Mississippi? Mississippi? Th- th- this is near Buffalo? Oh, oh, no, no, it's down south. Such beautiful, beautiful red lips. Uh, we had acres and acres. Well, Daddy was doing real well, and then just when cotton got high, women stopped wearing underwear. Now, Isabel, please. Isabel, no cows and stomachs and women's underwear. Now, tell me, tell me, do you like me a, a little? Well, yes, I... I think so. Uh, more than a little? I, I don't know. I never felt like this before. It, it's almost as if I... Oh, oh, that's such a lovely song. It's always been one of my favorites. Isabel, please, you, you keep moving away. Won't you sing it, Gus, that, that, that song? No, no, this is no time for singing, my dear. No, this is, this is time for love, for, for kisses, for... Oh. Oh, yeah. This is so much nicer than singing songs. 
Oh, Gus. Gus, no. No, my goodness. What are you doing? Isabel, come back. Isabel, oh, oh, you're trembling. You're crying. Well, well, it's all my own fault coming up here. Maybe Henry was right. N nothing but a little floozy. No, you mustn't say that. Oh, Gus, what am I going to do? You are going to melt into my arms. You are going to place that sweet little head on my shoulder. You are going to come close to... Hold it, Gus. That's it. You got a challenge? Come uh, on, Mrs. Pal. What a picture. All right, now rush it. I'll but... call the desk and tell them you're on the way. And as for you, Miss Perry, just pick up your things and get out. The party's over. All right, Bill, all right. But, but what's he talking about? What, what's happened? Come on, cut the stall, Miss Perry. Bill, but... please, it's enough. I just don't understand. Look, look, if you need money so badly, why didn't you tell me? I would have loaned you, given you. But, but I swear I don't know what you're talking about. I'm warning you, honey child. If you're not out of here in five minutes, I call the cops. Good heavens, will please huh? someone tell me what I've done? I just don't know what's going on. Luigi, Luigi, will you please shut up? Mrs. Peccatore, huh? The new maid, huh? Did not tell you she's no good? Oh. One pillow to my We catch you talking on the telephone to Mr. Dennis in newspaper. You what? Get in here. I'm a poor woman. He's giving me hundred bucks, but I don't steal. Not for hundred bucks. Who offers you a hundred dollars? Mr. Donnelly from the newspaper. Oh, Mr. Donnelly from the newspaper. Now, eh? Gus, now, now, just a minute, Gus. <laughs> Madam, do you realize this is a very serious charge you're making? Just which, Mr. Donnelly? From a newspaper. Oh, that, Mr. Donnelly. Uh, do you know this girl? No, senor. Did Donnelly hire her, too? No, senor. Only me. So, Mr. Wise Guy, press agent, didn't I tell you this corn pone is no corn pone? All right, all right. All right, all right. Now get the picture in the paper anyway. That picture. I gotta kill it. Isabel. Hello? I am so terribly Hello? Give sorry. Give me Madison 9970. Oh, we think you, you are hired to make a frame up. Oh, how could you? Because we are fools, that's hey, look why. Look who come back. The man who's taking the picture. Charlie. Johnny, what's the matter? Well, I had to get down to the corner and they're waiting for me. Donnelly's boys, they grabbed my plates, they bust my camera. Donnelly? But how did he know about this? I tell him, but I don't steal. I just make one little phone call. Oh, everybody get out of here. Gus, we got to do something about that picture. You did enough already. But Donnelly will hang you. This is a young girl in your apartment in the middle of the night. Oh, why did I ever come here tonight? Isabel, it's not your fault that you are so sweet and you are so stupid. Now, go inside. Go inside and get your things together. We'll find you a nice hotel room. And as for you, my genius press agent... So I made a little mistake. I'm sorry. Some little mistake. you got to think of some excuse for that picture. Now, who could you be kissing in the middle of the night? I mean, and get away with Now, it. please, please. Uh, suppose it was your sister. Or maybe your aunt just come over from the old country. Now, Bill, this is crazy. There is no relative I could be kissing in the middle of the night. Unless he's my wife. Oh, no, no, no. That's too far-fetched. Hey, suppose she was. What? Your wife. Suppose you and this little tomato get married now, tonight. All they'd have is a picture of a man kissing his wife. It happens all the no, time. No, no, no. I cannot do it. That's right. We'll get Judge Campbell out of bed. You'll be hitched by 3 o'clock and on the newsstands by 7. I cannot do it. Why not? Listen, there are many things I've done of which I'm not proud. But to make of marriage something dishonest? No, this, this I cannot do. You're in a spot. I don't get married to save my own neck. But just listen. And besides, how, how can I ask this girl to do such a thing? Well, ask who? You. Ask me what? Well, we just had a sensational Bell idea. Well, it's enough. We don't even discuss it. Just, just find a hotel for Miss Perry. That's all. Okay, pal. It's go. Your funeral. Now, come on, go now. Use the use the telephone downstairs. Gus, what what was it he wanted you to ask? Nothing, me? nothing, nothing. Well, if there's anything I can do to help, I you are I will. you are very kind, but believe me, it's impossible. Well, what was it? Now, come. We go downstairs and we wait until. Gus, I'm not leaving here until you tell me what it was. All right, all right. Bill wants us to get married. Who? You and me. You and me? Yes, tonight, now, to kill that picture. Oh. You see, it's impossible. Why? Well, because it's impossible. But why? Now, why do you keep asking why, 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 why? Marriage is something special for two people who are very much in love. Well, not necessarily. Isabel. Well, I mean, sometimes, maybe if just one of them is in love, that's enough. But you... Oh, you, you couldn't possibly be in love with me. Well, that's where you're wrong, Gus. Up until tonight, I, I always thought I had a schoolgirl crush on you. 
like, like some girls had on Rudolph Valentino. But tonight we met, and you kissed me, and you held me in your arms, and you danced with me, and, and then I realized that what I'd been feeling all this time was love. Real love, Gus. And, and you'd marry me just, just like this? Well, not just to get you out of trouble. I'd, I'd have to feel that someday you might love me as much as, as I think I love you. Do you realize that it might not ever work out? Oh, I'm sure we could make a try. Work if we tried. I, I'd be willing to try. Oh, Gus, why don't we? Okay. We try. Oh. Well? It's Luigi. Mr. Dempsey says you just got a Mary. You want to see the certificate? Don't you believe him? But what are you getting so excited about? <laughs> it's your wedding night, so I bring you a nice bottle of wine. That's all. Oh, that, that's very nice of you. Grazie. Happy now, now go. Good night. Hey, wait a minute. In there. Why what? you fix up the couch in the living room? Because I fix up couch. My why? Because I fix up. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ma, please, don't get so excited. Will you kindly go? All right. Ma, che sono tutti tu, tu pazzi questa casa qui. Anything wrong, Gus? No, 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 no. You, you, you go to sleep in the bedroom now. Eh? I, I see you in the morning. But uh, what was all that shouting? Nothing, nothing. Luigi brought a, a bottle of wine. That's all. Oh, how sweet. Well, aren't you going to open it? Isabel, it's three o'clock. Please, please, you, you turn off the light and go to sleep. Only uh, first you lock the door, eh? But why? Never mind, just lock it. All right. Isabel, do you always fix your hair like this before you go to bed? Do you like it? Yes. Why? I, I don't know, I just like it. Can't I like it? Sure, you can like it. Well, then I like it. Thank you. Now go to sleep, come on. Uh, Gus, Gus, I, I know how this has been a very trying day for you, but... I just want you to know how proud I am to have you for my husband. Good, good night, Isabel. You've been very, very nice and, and a gentleman. Uh, all right. And I'm terribly fond of thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I think I'd like to have you kiss me good night. Uh, no. Oh, please. Okay, very well. Uh, one kiss on the forehead, huh? Thank you, Gus. Now, wait. wait. Yes? One thing I must tell you. Now, why does, does a girl like you, as sweet and lovely and charming, Get engaged to, to, to a nothing like that, Henry Green. It, it seemed like the practical thing to do. Practical? Henry's so solid and, and conservative and, and with good common sense to hold me back. From what? From myself. Oh, my goodness, you don't know what I'm really like. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm warm-blooded and impetuous and oh, all. Oh. Well, really? Well, but the, these feelings are quite normal. They're in everybody. Everybody? Even Italians? Especially Italians. <laughs> oh. oh, Isabella... Oh, I would like to take you in my arms and hold you so very close and kiss you and... Why don't you? Because, unfortunately, you are my wife. Now, now go, go. Take the key and lock the door. Eh? Lock it? Lock the door. And after all this excitement, if you can't sleep, you call me. I bring you hot milk, I read to you, and I sing to you, but lock the door. Good night, guys. Good night, Miss Cornpone. Curtain rises on Act Three of Strictly Dishonorable, starring Janet Lee as Isabel and Fernando Lamas as Gus Carafa, with Maria Palmer as Lily. Well, it's the following day, and the news of Agostino Carafa's marriage is in all the newspapers, except Harry D Henry Donnelly's. But Mr. Donnelly's by no means defeated. Already he sent his best reporter to call on a handsome young woman named the Countess Lily Chadbini. 
Meanwhile, at Gus's apartment, the newlyweds have a visitor. Oh, Uncle Nito, good morning. So, my fine American opera singer. Isabel, this is my Uncle Nito, my wife. Congratulations to you both. Oh, thank you, thank you kindly. I hope you're happy. You killed your mother. Oh, no. What is wrong with Mama? She picks up the paper and her own son is married in the middle of the night without permission. How is Mama? To me, it's no surprise. All the time, more scandal. It's a nice vest you got on. You through with it? Yes, yes. I'll give it to you. How is Mama? Very bad. It's no use. Mama is through with you. I'll call her on the telephone right away. She will not talk to you, and I will talk to you just the once a month when I come for the check. <laughs> Gus, I, I don't understand. Why is your mother so angry? Well, you see, uh, to Italian mothers, if your son gets married without permission, well, it's a, it's a very big insult. Oh, then, then let's get her permission. That's so simple. No, it's not so simple, but we try. Come, my dear, get your call. Huh? I, uh... So you buy new neckties, huh? Yes, I buy new neckties. Just to tell me one thing. Why you buy with dots when you know I like a stripes? You don't like, you don't wear. I huh? wear just one. But it will look lousy with my blue suit. My blue suit. Now, Harry, Isabel, we go home with Uncle Nito. <laughs> Mama, Mama, please, Mama. All all right, all all right. I forgive you get married without permission. But why three o'clock in the morning? Believe me, Mama, it was important. Why? Sometimes it's very necessary to get married at three o'clock in the morning. If the boy says it was necessary, maybe it was necessary. Please, you stay off my side. In Italy, decent man does not get married three o'clock in the morning. Mama, listen, when it's three o'clock here, it's nine o'clock in Italy. So was it bad with nine o'clock? Please, you keep out. Will I'm you keep out? I'm just trying to help you. Then shut up. Now be quiet, both of you. Mama, Mama, I, I just want to assure you that when Gus and I got married without your permission, we didn't mean any ill will or disrespect. And I want you to know that as long as I'm Gus's wife, I'll do everything I can to give him happiness. And we've come here to humbly ask your approval. Gus, what is this one's name? Isabel. Hmm. He's very skinny. Oh, we'll fatten it up. <laughs> Isabel is not Italian. Mama, please. There are many other people in this country besides Italians. But who needs that? Hello? Yes? One minute. It's for you. It's Mr. Dempsey. Excuse me. Uh, uh, hello, Bill. I'll give it to you fast, Gus. It's Lily. Lily? Donnelly's got to her. Uh, Lily's suing you for breach of promise, those love letters you wrote her. But if you get over to her apartment right away, she says she might reconsider if you start annulment proceedings tonight. Now, Bill, I... I'm with Lily and her lawyer now. Okay, I'll be right over. Well, what is now with the Hungarian? Nothing, Mama, no, nothing at all. Gus, is there anything... Uh, come, Isabel, I drop you off at home. No, you leave, Isabel. We talk. All right, goodbye, Mama. I phone you later. When? I don't know, this afternoon. Two, maybe three o'clock. Good, that's nine o'clock in Italy. <laughs> So you can see, Mr. Crapper, as Miss Advani's legal advisor, I'm certain we have an airtight case of breach of promise. I, uh, should hate to have to read your very eloquent letters in court. He loves the ground I walk on. The ground below the ground I walk on. All right, Lily, all right. Don't walk so much. <laughs> but my client, in a burst of generosity, has agreed to call off the suit if... You'll just authorize these annulment proceedings. I have all the papers right here. Bill. That's pretty rough, Gus. If you don't sign, well, you can just kiss your career goodbye. But this is a terrible thing to do. I, I have obligations to Isabel. You also have an obligation to the public. They've made you. They're entitled to go on hearing you sing. He's right, darling. Besides, I hate to drag you into court now. I have nothing to wear. But if... But if I married yesterday and I sang an almond today, this, this also is going to be in the paper. Oh, no, 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 no. We're willing to wait a reasonable length of time. Uh, you'll notice that these papers are not dated. And gotcha, Gus. All right. I sign. You're being very wise, Mr. Carafa. Bill, what do I tell her? Isabel. Huh? You tell her about this now, and she'll go out and start a suit of her own. And wouldn't Donnelly just love that? But I must tell her. Sure, sure. Two or three months from now, when things cool down, you'll tell her we'll go someplace and get a nice, quiet annulment. 
In the meantime, uh, where do you like to sleep? Near the wall or the window? Why? Because you're moving in with me. It's the only sensible thing to do. Uh, I suppose so. Discouraging, but sensible. <laughs> Uh, may I come in? Yes, I Oh, you mean you're all alone? Isn't mm. Bill here? No, no, no. He, he's out. You look very nice, Isabel. Oh, thank you. It's been so long since I've seen you. Yes, over a week. Well, I see Mama every day, and she tells me all about you. Mama likes you, Isabel. Very, very much. Well, it's nice that somebody in the family can get along with me. Oh, Gus, why did you move in here with Bill? Isabel, it's, it's like I told you, this, this arrangement. It's just better for a while. Anyway, I, I've made up my mind, Gus. I'm here to say goodbye. Goodbye? I think it might be best if I went back home for a while. Back home to Mississippi? All the way to Buffalo? <laughs> There's a train tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Tomorrow at 4, eh? Mm-hmm. And what are you doing tonight? Uh, nothing. Uh, what are you doing? Well, the bill is away, you see, and so uh, I have to do some reading. Uh, here? No, no, no. I, I go and read to a sick friend. Oh, well, I'll be home uh, if you want me for anything. Thank you. A and in case I don't see you tomorrow, goodbye, Gus. Isabel, no, no. Wait. Yes? Would you like me to take you home? Oh, very much. You would? No, I, I, I don't think I should, no, I... Going to a married woman's apartment alone. Oh, are you afraid? Isabel, tell me. Just what are your intentions toward me? Strictly dishonorable, honey. Strictly dishonorable. Ah, let's go. God. But, darling, how sweet of you to stop by. Good morning, Lily. Lily, I have something very important to tell you. Darling, how exciting. What? I know it may sound ridiculous to you, but it cannot be helped. I am in love with my wife. God, how nice. I don't want to hurt you, Lily, but I love this girl very much. So if, if you'll give me back my letters, I'm sure we can work out some satisfactory arrangement. Do you really think so? But if you prefer to make trouble, this time I don't even care. You can ruin my career, do whatever thing you want. I will not give up this girl. You must love her very much. More than anything in life. Darling, how wonderful. And you must not worry about letters or my broken heart. I, I understand such things. I am Hungarian. You are a Hungarian angel. Now, uh, could I have my letters? Your happiness is all that matters. Thank you. Thank you again. But my letters, dear. Uh, when? When? Hmm? You have matinee performances? Yes, I sing Faust. But the letters? I will bring to your dressing room this afternoon. Oh, Lily, you are not a countess. You are a princess. You are a queen. Please, Gus. Just go and, and don't worry. Thank you, Lily. Thank you kindly. Mr. Bailey, Miss Advani, I understand you've been calling me. I've been in court. Never mind. Years. About those annulment papers, the ones Carafa signed. Fill in the date. Today's date. And take them over to his wife. Today's date? You... But we promised him that we'd wait until he gave us... You a... hear me. Or do I get other lawyer? I want that annulment to go through now. <laughs> I couldn't leave New York, Mama, without saying goodbye to you. Isabel, but this morning you telephone. You're so happy. You tell me you and my stupid son. Well, yes, he did come home last night, Mama, but... And you tell me that we win. And I tell you what I tell you last week. A man is not the maid out of wood. Oh, we won, all right. We won a trip back home. Well, you can tell Gus that I don't blame him. Something is wrong. He said, does not to make a sense. But I told you, Mama. Gus signed the annulment papers this morning. And then that lawyer, Mr. Bailey, well, he came to see me and... Well, I just signed them too. And you can tell Gus when I get home, I'll send back his suitcase and... 
Oh, Mama, I guess I'll always love you. Oh, Isabella. I've got to go, Mama. I've got to catch my train. Say goodbye to Uncle Nito. Uncle Nito? Yes. Uncle Nito. Nito, Nito, come quickly. <laughs> Uncle Nito, what are you doing here? Augustino, now don't get excited. But my entrance, I go on stage in one minute. Yes, I know. But your wife is running away. She's what? You kick her out so she's going to take the train home. Home? What do you mean I kicked her out? You kick her out when you sign an old Anna, An al when does the train leave? Fifteen minutes, Pennsylvania Station. You come with me, Mama. Come, come. Please, please, the music will stop for a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you please to forgive me. I must leave the opera and stop a train. Believe me, it is very, very important. And don't worry about the opera from here on. You don't miss much. You see, this fellow Faust, he sells to me his soul, and he meets this Margarita, and they fall in love. And her brother comes, and everybody fights, you see. He fights with her, she fights with him. This one goes crazy, that one gets killed. So... Then I take Mr. Faust back where I come from, and you know where that is. So I'll tell you what. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Next week, I sing Mephistopheles again, and meantime, I pay you back all the money for today. Please forgive me, and thank you. <laughs> Mama, believe me, Mama, I, I did sign the paper, but I didn't sign the paper. It was Lily. Never mind. You go. And if you don't bring back Isabel... I bring, I bring. Don't worry. Bill, you, you stay with Mama. Where is he? Where is Carapa? Uh-oh, the car is the poison. If he does this, I give these letters to Donnelly. I smear him across front page of paper. I destroy this man. So where is he? Uh, he's in his dressing room, Countess. Now, you just come with me. Oh, no. I go with the lady. It's family affair. <laughs> All right, Delcy, what's going on in there? Just two ladies with a difference of opinion about some literary material. Mr. Delcy, would you burn these letters, please? Why, thank you, Mom. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Isabel, Isabel, oh. it is me, your husband, Agustino. Oh, but, but that costume, you look like... I know, I know, in the opera, that's where I come from. Oh, oh darling, darling, it's all a mistake. Well, I, I have to stop this train. Oh, but why did you sign the paper? I signed the paper, but I didn't sign the paper. Well, uh, what's the idea of stopping this train? Oh, you didn't sign the paper, but I thought... That Will you... you forget the paper? Oh, I love you. Now, look, oh. either get on or get off. You really love I me. I love you so much that... Now, tell me, this train go, goes to Mississippi? Mississippi? No, that's track 10. This is track 11. Oh, oh no. Well, no wonder I couldn't find my bag. I told the porter track 10. Oh, my oh, goodness. My what am I... Oh, my goodies. I was so upset. <sighs> uh, please, uh, tell me, uh, where does it go? It's the Canadian Limited. It goes to Niagara Falls? Yes. Good. We take it. Thank you. Oh, but because we, ha we have no clothes, no reservations, nothing. What's the difference, darling? We are going to Niagara Falls. Well, I... Uh... I suppose they do have shops there. Of course. Darling, it's one of the nicest towns in Florida. <laughs> in a moment, our stars will return. But now here's Ken Carpenter with news about mouth health. Ken? Millions of Americans have found that Chlorodent toothpaste. Here they are, two strictly distinguished stars, Janet Lee and Fernando Lama. Well, thank 
you for the distinguished, but um, we're also a little disgruntled. That'll never do. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> well, you see, for a change, Janet would like to play a siding in a picture. Yes, something strictly, strictly dishonorable, like um, <laughs> uh, like the bad and the beautiful Metro Golden Mayor's new picture starring Lana Turner and Kirk Douglas. You know, when I was in pictures in the Argentine, I wasn't always the hero. I played many, many bad men. Mm, well, I don't know how bad you are, Fernando, but there's no doubt that Janet is beautiful. She's one of our loveliest Lux girls. Well, there's no doubt about my being a Lux girl. Lux soap is certainly my favorite. And did you know Fernando used to star in the Lux radio theater in Buenos Aires? And he's a South American swimming champ? <laughs> well, the man does everything. He's a fine singer, and he's probably an expert horseman, too. What is it they call them in South America, Fernando? Uh... Gaucho, gaucho. Oh, yeah. crazy. I dig you, too, George. George? <laughs> Who is this man, George? He's well... another clown like <laughs> oh. you, too. Which brings us to another MGM comedy called The Clown, starring Red Skelton and Jane Greer. You know, Red's pictures are always great favorites in my country. Oh, and I hear you're traveling to another country for next week's play. That's right, Janet. United Artists sent a wonderful cast and crew all the way to Africa to make this picture. And it was so sensational that both stars were nominated for Academy Awards. It's the fascinating adventure of the African Queen. And recreating his original Academy Award winning role will be Humphrey Bogart. And as his co-star, one of the most beautiful and gracious ladies in Hollywood, Greer Gosson. I shall be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Has this happened to you? All dressed to go out for an evening, and then, uh-oh, a run in your stocking. Oh, what a nuisance. But stocking runs are a nuisance any time and often unnecessary. Because you can cut stocking runs in half. Make one pair of nylons, wear like two. And it's very simple. Just never let harsh washings with strong wash day products wear out your stockings in the wash. Delicate nylons, like delicate lingerie, need the safest care you can give them. Lux Flakes Care. Safe Lux Flakes melt completely into a silky cleansing foam. And each gentle washing in pure Lux Flakes has a special action that keeps nylon threads strong as new, washing after washing. Lux Flakes Care doubles stocking wear. Well, that's like getting an extra pair of nylons with every pair you buy. So start using Lux Flakes tomorrow. 95% of stocking manufacturers recommend Lux Flakes. They're guaranteed by Lever Brothers Company. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Greer Gosson and Humphrey Bogart in The African Queen. This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in our cast tonight were Maria Palmer as Lily, Ted Nicosia as Bill, Jay Novello as Luigi, Jeanette Nolan as Mrs. Peccatore, Barney Phillips as Donnelly, Jonathan Hole as Henry, Stephen Dunn as the reporter, Herbert Butterfield as Uncle Nito, Helen Van Tyle as Mama, William Johnstone as the lawyer, Dorothy Fay as Marie, Robert Griffin as Charlie, and Eddie Marr as the stage manager. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. We